Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome. I am Tara Kinden, the Celestial Manifester, and I have no idea where I'm going to post this. I'm probably going to post it on all the things, so I'm not even going to say it's going specifically here, but you will be able to find this in all of the places, YouTube, probably on a podcast somewhere. I'll list everything below so you know where to find me and get more information on some of the beautiful insights I'm going to share with you. And today it's all about the Venus star point. We have a brand new Venus star point coming into Libra, which hasn't happened for over a hundred years. So be prepared for all the magic and all the miracles surrounding things like relationships, justice, equality, being in partnerships that feel rewarding, fulfilling, and supportive, like balanced. This will be such a beautiful time. I'm going to share with you information on the astrology and the human design, and then the crowning glory of the Venus star point, because she has her own chart. And I think that it's going to be really exciting to share with you, you know, the visuals, right? So let me explain a little bit about how I look at a chart. And when I'm doing a reading for somebody else, what I look for within the chart to help me understand that divine feminine frequency. And part of like my focus and work is around that beautiful feminine energy and finding a way to be in your feminine energy, you know, but also still be taking action and doing all the things and being really grounded in your femininity, but not being like really up here so much so that you never really get anything done or you don't know how to land or ground, you know, those, the, the vibes and the feelings, because it's all about the embodiment of bringing it in and down and then sharing it out. As you share it out, you become so much more magnetic when you're in the zone. When you're not in the zone, it's like instant repel. (laughs) Not that you can really repel people, but you all know what I mean. Your energy steps into the room before you do. Before you pick up the phone to make that call, before you send the email, like your vibes are already gone out the door. So if you're mad when you're writing the thing, the person on the receiving end of that can already feel it. Does that make sense? I hope it does, but let's dive in. So I'm going to share with you the foundational chart, which is the astrology chart first. I like to think of the astrology as like when we're looking at a home, it's that foundation, it's that base, it's it's immovable, right? It's structured, it's sacred, and it's how everything else gets layered on top. So this fundamental structure is who you are, you know, in your finest glory. This is your, this is your, almost your like fixed energy. You can work with it. You can, you know, work around it, but you have to work in like partnership with it. You cannot, you can't jump over it. You have to work with it. And when we look at the human design, how it layers on top, it's this beautiful energy. It's a flow. It's, um, It's more movable. It's like when you decorate a room and you set up your furniture. Well, if you keep bumping into the couch, it's not an issue. You can just move it around a little bit. That's what I like to think. You can work with your human design and be in the flow with it. You can also work with your astrology, but it's more of like a foundational uh, baseline. Like, yes, there is a higher octave or, you know, a more elevated frequency and a lower frequency of how that energy can be expressed but it's literally what it is where your human design, you have a little bit more play. You have a little bit more play. You can look at things a little bit differently. It's very energetic, you know, and you have some ability to manipulate the energy a little bit to work more for you and how you're designed to be here. And then the Venus star point is like, the cosmic heartbeat. That's what Ariel Goodman calls it. The cosmic heartbeat and brings us into connection with our place on this planet. Okay. So your Venus star point is actually a fixed star point for you based on your birthday. And it is like the jewels. It's the crowning glory of the whole house structure. So it's the beautiful baubles you put up. It's the decorative stuff. That's like fabulous. That is literally that highest expression of your Venus star point, which is different from Venus in your chart, Venus, the planet in your charts. 
both in your human design and your astrology. The Venus star point is a separate point to those. So it's like this trifecta makes up a really cool kind of blueprint, energetic blueprint of who you are and how you're designed to be here in this world. Now, for those of you who are hearing this for the first time and your minds are already like, whoa, don't worry, come back, listen, feel into how does it feel when I hear this and how do I want to work with this for myself? Because we're not going to be looking at your charts specifically, but we are going to be looking at the charts of what is transiting during this period of this Venus star point, which is happening on October 22nd, 2022. And now I'm on Fogo Island. So I've chosen a the, the chart for here and the time that it's happening here is at 6 11 PM and it's exact position will be at 29 degrees of Libra, 25 minutes. Okay. But it may show up in different houses and what have you for you, depending on your location. So listen more to how this energy could show up, how you can embrace it and how you can really enjoy what it is. Let it be what it is. Before I dive into, I'm going to light our Libra candle. So as many of you know, I am the creator behind the witch and the wick candle line. And this is actually part of the Celestial Collection. For those of you who are in the Celestial Club, you got this one. You got Scorpio and Sag, and we won't reopen that box until January. So if you're interested, put it in your back pocket, friends. This is the Libra candle. And there's a lot of powerful energy in here. It has Labradorite. It has um, Goldstone. It has the uh, Shivalingam. And it has a beautiful clear quartz. So a lot of powerful energy to help with that balancing and grounding and bringing that fertility of the masculine and feminine energies together to create something. And then, of course, the abundance and the, the sparking of your creativity. There is this big element of creativity within this candle. So I'm going to light it so that we have it here ready to rock. And then we're going to look at the astrology first to see. I'm so excited to light this with you all because I've been saving it, but now now is the time. So I put it on my desk. I have it here with me while I work through the season. Um, and let's share. So here we're going to go into the part first of the astrology and you should be able to see that right away so here we go we have when i'm looking at this for location like where i am in the world it has gemini rising okay it has an aquarius midheaven and i look i always look just when i'm reading a chart like sun moon ascendant to kind of get the energy and flow of what this person's energy would be like so our venus star point she she's you know maybe she is being seen as there's two sides to her right she's having a hard time making decisions possibly but she's got this beautiful moon down in virgo what really wants to feel into building something solid something creative because it's in the fifth house so this creative new grounded something being birthed into the world right we have when we look at like the conjunction or the kazimi okay it's a superior kazimi and it is actually showing up as 29 degrees uh 28 minutes for some reason i had 25 but potatoes potatoes and if you look at where they are, they're showing up in the sixth house here, okay? So as they show up in the sixth house, it's like, what are our daily rituals? What are our daily rhythms? What is actually happening here within the flow of your routines, how you're showing up? This can also be around health and wellness, Okay. And health and wellness, this is like our own internal health and wellness. And yes, Libra is about balance and relationships, justice, all of the things I talked about earlier, but this can also be introspective being in that sixth house saying like, how am I nurturing and nourishing my own self before I engage in relationships with other people? 
Okay. There's also a really beautiful trine happening to Vesta. Vesta is our home and hearth. It's where our heart fire is. So where is your heart fire? Okay. Where's your heart fire right now? What are your desires? What do you dream about? It's in the 10th house. So this is all about like, what are you wanting to build in the world for, you know, your work in the world, how you show up in the world, how you want to be seen in your work, whatever your work is, whether you work within the home or you work outside of the home, you know, whether you're raising babies and doing the, and doing everything for your family, like whatever it is, how is that, what brings you the most desire around that and creating a structure that's sustainable right? It's sustainable. It's balanced. It's, it's like you're learning how to communicate your needs in a new way within this structure of helping to take care of, you know, everybody else, but also really taking care of yourself first, because you are the most important person. So you see that this trine goes from Vesta down to Mars in Gemini. So it's creating this grand air trine. Okay. This grand air trine is really forcing us. There's a grand, it's the grand air trine is really forcing us or encouraging us to think about new ways that we can be in action in our femininity. We've got Mars and Venus here working together and asking us, you know, how can we be in this beautiful energetic flow between our masculine, that divine masculine energy, which is about action. It is about moving things forward. It is about doing things, you know, and bringing almost like you've got this big juicy idea about how you really want to be seen and showing up in the world connected to your desires, but we need to be not only in receptive place of Venus receiving magnetism, you know, really showing up in the energy and the frequency to create this flow of attraction, but there needs to be work that goes with that. We can't just sit back and be in receptivity. When I talked earlier about like, you know, some really divine feminine frequency, it can talk a lot about like being receptive and being in the flow. And like, whilst that is true, you also need to put like boots on the ground and, you know, those big dreams need to actually have things happening daily to make it happen, to not make it happen, but to really encourage the movement forward, if that makes sense. So there's a push and a pull that you're we're really learning how to be in the duality and the balance of that, which is so hard right now, the way the world is, you know, it's like, just go out and do it, but but also be very like in the flow when you do it. It doesn't make sense. So it's how do you personally understand this energy and figure out a way for you to be in a flow for yourself that feels amazing, that feels productive, but that also feels like you're not working and extending yourself so hard that there's nothing left for you at the end of the day, that you're exhausted and you have nothing left to contribute, nothing left to give. You're just, you're, done. That's what we don't want. We want you to be desiring heart fire in the thing. Okay. So in a nutshell, you know, that's literally the energy we have Mercury here also in Libra saying, you know, what's the balanced way for us to communicate our needs? How can I ask for what I want? How can I use my wisdom with this square here to palace? It's like the leg up. How can I use my wisdom to tell, you know, whoever, tell myself <laughs> what it is that I actually need? Am I listening to the information that I'm receiving to be able to then ask for what I need? And now let me share with you the chart for the HD, because I think this is really going to help you to land it down into your physical body. So here's the chart. I'm not going to go through all the background other than the fact that like personality here, for those of you who are brand new to human design, I'll put a link to my course that's very inexpensive. And it's a beautiful way for you to start learning more about human design in a way that feels really good. 
uh, but this is your personality. So when you took your first breath, this is exactly where the stars were in that moment. It's the magical part that created you, you know, you here in the now. The design side is your ancestral lineage, the knowledge that came through uh, could be previous lifetimes and it could be your, uh, that your, 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 DNA, it's come through before, right? So it's sort of running around in the background. It is always here and available to you. When you feel lost, confused, wobbly, you can lean on this knowingness because it's always here for you. And But it can show up in funny ways like, you know, when you update your phone, and your apps go all over the place. You're like, where is all my stuff? And what, why can't I figure this out? And that you respond to things triggered. This is that running in the background kind of thing. This is that energy running in the background. As you get older, I find this merges a little bit, but depending on where you're at in your life, you may be like, why am I so triggered about these things? This could be why, but we are literally going to look at the personality side. This is like what, you know, you're used to it. You're, you're, you understand this energy. And what I want to share with you is again, this grand trine that we have also in air where we have Mercury, Saturn, and Mars making this connection. Remember I talked before about another grand trine that I saw, which was, uh, we'll go back to it, but just focusing here within this chart, that Mercury, Saturn, and Mars is really asking us, because we have Mercury here, okay? Mercury's down in 57, which runs off your spleen center. This is instinctual. You just like, it's a lightning bolt of like, ooh, I feel this thing. I feel this. And gate 57 is the most intuitive gate in the entire chart. Intuitive, intuitive, intuitive. It's called the gate of instinct. It's your ability to sense when it is the right time for you to be acting on whatever the thing is. It's like you intuitively know what needs to be kind of like made ready and prepared for the future and to give you that push to follow through. But when you get hits here in the center, especially when it's open, you're amplifying collective fear. You can be amplifying collective like scarcity and, you know, getting stuck. You could have fear of the future, right? So you want to be in this instinctual knowing when you get that hit of like, ooh, do this thing. And it can be as simple as this, have a glass of water. And you go and have a drink of water and you get more information. It keeps coming to you. Like if you're the kind of person who gets these quick flashes of insights that goes, oh, no, not now. I'm too busy doing this other thing. It will come less often. But the more you listen to those quick instinctual guidances, the more they will come to you and fast. It'll be very exciting if you start to pay attention to it. So you think of this grand trine with that gate of instinct, okay? You've got the gate of instinct there. And then you've got Saturn in Aquarius in the gate 13, okay? Gate 13 sits here off your G center. And this is about your, your heart, your direction, you know, and it's the gate of the narrative. So this gate is asking you, what is the story you are sharing with the world about who you are, okay? What is that story? Because the story you tell yourself about who you are, it shows up before you show up. You know what I mean? So like if you think, if you're, if you're telling a story that's different from what you actually feel, people feel what you feel the story that you're, it's this undercurrent. They hear what you're saying, but they're feeling something different. So making sure that the story of who you believe yourself to be is aligning not only within you, but as you're speaking, right? Because it moves up to the throat here, moves up through the 33, but we're not talking about the 33 today. We're just talking about the 13. Okay. And then the next piece is Mars being in Gemini in the 12. Well, that's right here running off the throat. And this is the gate of the channel. Okay. And the gate of the channel is about like this fast and furious information coming through you direct from source. You're speaking directly from source. 
it is that gate of the channel. It's like really knowing and understanding that your voice is a vehicle for transformation. It is the truest expression of transformation. And it's that it is a vehicle for divine insight, right? So the words you speak, the integrity, creativity you share have the power to change others and the world. The words you speak have, a, have the ability to bring things into form. So remember that this story you're telling about yourself, when we go back to 13, it's saying, you know, be aware of the story you're telling about yourself to yourself and to others, because whatever you're saying has the ability to manifest in the physical. Okay. This is how quick and how powerful it can be when we're talking about manifestation, but this energy is so powerful that people have to be ready to receive it. It's not like, you're not telling everybody about the things that you're thinking or you, you understand, because not everybody's ready for that. But when you know how to be articulate with your words, you're ready to share it. If you're stumbling over the words, if you're like, can't quite come up with what you need to say, the timing is off. And just knowing that because it'll help you be in alignment more, okay, more regularly. And it gives you this powerful ability to craft language, really using your voice as creative expression for you to bring and manifest things into the physical plane, okay? So using your voice is gonna be a big one. And this is all masculine planets when we look at that trine. Now we haven't even talked about Venus and I know this is the Venus star point, but I just wanted to fill you in on what was happening kind of in the background, like visualizing that trine, visualizing how that could show up for you, these instant insights, these instant ideas, and then how to move them forward. How to like, you get this idea, you get this inspiration, like, oh, I'm going to start a new workout routine. It feels like I should do that. Go and do it. Take the action. This is that Mars in a very, in a very subtle and receptive way because Mars in Gemini, he's not that happy in Gemini. He's not, he doesn't hate it, but he's not that happy there. He wants to be in action, right? And he's being slowed down a little bit. He has to think more and he can get caught up in his head there. So we want to be conscious of not getting into our heads too much, but actually moving it down into the body to be like, what am I being asked to do? What's the insights I'm getting here? Then we look at like, what do you need to be grounded to shine in the light, okay? And the light is actually where Venus and the sun are here in gate 50, okay? Gate 50 is the gate of nurturing. It's down here, again, off of the spleen. There can be a fear here, a fear running. And in its unbalanced expression is like, oh, I have to take care. I have to overcare. I overcare and then I give too much away and I have nothing left for myself. But what you're learning here with the sun and Venus being right there, how do I nurture myself so that I have more to give to other people? You know, it's that intuition to know what other needs, others need. You, you intuitively feel what other people need. The people who have this gate natally, they just know. They just know what you need. They're the people who just like give you the hug. They're the people that give you the call. They're the people that drop off the soup. They're the people that do the things you need without you needing to say anything. But those folks can also get caught up in over giving to everyone. So much so that they literally burn themselves out and they have nothing left to give. They have nothing for themselves and they have nothing for others. So really what they're learning to do is to get into this higher alignment of love, love of nurturing themselves to help others nurture them. They're teaching people how to nurture themselves at the same time. And they're learning how to be in, you know, sustainability and peace and being at peace with helping showing other people how to take care of themselves because they're literally here to teach and share with other people uh, how to increase the well-being of the collective, the well-being of, you know, maybe the people in their homes or their community or whatever it is. But we are all getting access to this energy. And this is the beauty of what I believe to be this star point. It hasn't been here for over a hundred years. 
The last time it was here was when there was the women's revolution, the women's rights revolution. It was the, the suffragettes. It was the ability to vote. It was really, you know, taking on a new level of femininity, feminine power, you know, pulling in what we feel we deserve as equality on the whole, you're seeing this starting now. Like I'm recording this days before. It's officially, I think, what's today? Today's the 19th. But you, you, we've been feeling this energy coming, and it's been shaking the foundation. I mean, there's been a lot of things going on, and we are moving into a time and an era where next year, they're you're saying in 2023 that the energy will be as big. The astrology and the human design energy will be as big as 2020, but I don't think we'll be as unsteady. I feel like we have better legs. We've built our sea legs over these last couple of years, and we know now what to expect with certain things, but this is a beautiful time to cultivate, to curate, to pull in your power in the sense of knowing who you are, what you're capable of doing, and to not get caught up in the dramas of other people, to not collect, suck in all that collective fear, all that collective uh, uncertainty, but to focus on what you can do, what you can do to take care of yourself, to take care of the people that you love, to take care of the bigger collective as you begin to become stronger. Okay, so how do you ground yourself in this energy? How can you stay grounded? Well, it's in the gate three, which is down here. It's the gate of innovation, okay? And what does innovation mean? Well, it's to learn how to embrace and integrate new ideas, new approaches, new ways of doing things that you know people may have never seen before, and to learn to stay in appreciation for your unique way of viewing things, thinking about things, and seeing things, to trust that you know, this, you're innovating on the edge of consciousness. So like there is an element of timing here and not to force the timing. This is part of our lesson. I don't know. Patience is one of the cards I pull often and it's the card I actually want to burn out of the deck I have that just shows you how patient I am. So learning how to be in patience and, and that knowing, ah, oh, this is, this is a season. Maybe you're in a season of whatever, but like sometimes your season is a slower season. It's a more nurturing season. It's, you know, and then there are other times where it's a season of action, a season of celebration, a season of being seen, you know, but it's not all the time we go through cycles and seasons, but we forget that there are these seasons. So you are always in innovation mode, but there will be this spark of you need to be thinking about ways to innovate differently so that it keeps you feeling grounded. If you see something that's not working, how can you look at it differently to be like, ooh, this could be a possibility. What insights are you getting? What inspirations are you getting from spirit, God, source, other conscious, uh, galactic consciousness, whatever it is, you know, however it lands for you, but giving yourself time, space, and freedom to be able to let it flow through and to you. Cause it does take some time to, to get that information to come on in and down. Okay. So just know that ideas and patience will come, it will come to you if you learn how to be patient. Okay. And lastly, I wanted to focus on the moon because the moon is right here and gate six, which is interesting because it's the gate of impact. You see, it's like opposite sides to the gate of nurturing. And this beautiful, lovely moon is sitting here in gate six, and this is the gate of impact. Okay. The gate of impact is teaching us how to really maintain a high level of frequency. This is the creative, it's the cre emotional solar plexus is the most creative center within the human design chart. All the creative feelings, juices, things come from this place, the butterflies, the excitement, right? It all is stored here. And this level of impact is, this is about the frequency. This helps to really catalyze that, that magnetic monopole that sits within the heart to only super attract 
So if you're in this level of lower vibration, like lower frequency, feeling a little depressed, feeling stuck, feeling uh, uncertain, unsteady, unstable, what can you do to dive into those feelings to become more in your creativity, to create space for more potential, more possibility? What does it what do you need to do to nurture your own creative vibes? Because this frequency is about learning ways to help yourself support that equitability, that sustainability and peace. So when you learn how to use your alignment, you also influence others. Remember, like people drop, don't drop to the lowest frequency they rise the highest frequency so like the person who can hold that frequency for an extended period of time it just like attracts other people towards it so thinking about when you walk into your house and you're in a really lower frequency state everyone else kind of like just sits at that flatlining level but if you just make a conscious effort to be like okay let's try something different you know let's go do whatever and get creative together everyone else starts to kind of like come up to it, right? So you either have this choice, like, okay, be in flat line, sit in the shit of it without, you know, without another word for that, or rise up the frequency within your household to make things change, to create that change. And this is that Mars action. You might get an insight or an inspiration or an intuition that says, ooh, we should go for a walk. Perfect. Go do it. That's going to create impact. That's going to change the frequency. That's going to move the energy. Like when you get stuck and you're feeling really weighted down in the heaviness of the life that is around, go shake it up. Emotions are just energy in motion. How do you move that frequency through? It's going to go through regardless, but how can you help it to rise up to a different level of frequency faster? So you spend less time in the dip, more time in the up, and having yourself understand, like, I feel better at this place than this place. And you begin to understand how you move from here to here. I think this is what we're learning. Over this Venus star point, we are really going to learn how to hone in our energy, how to like nurture the people by nurturing ourselves first. You hear this all the time. You can't help other people until you take care of yourself, right? Well, how are you going to do that? Because this Venus star point wants us to really be in loving, supportive, nurturing, impactful relationships that inspire us, that fall in the most like divine ideas and passion within us, you know, and change the way things have been because they've been so challenged. You know, last couple of years has definitely been a ride. And even if your business has been successful and, you know, you're in successful relationships, there have been unsettled elements somewhere in your life. How can you ground those unsettling moments? Tune into spirit, tune into uh, whatever is that connection piece for you to feel like you belong somewhere. Jupiter is in that gate 25, which is the gate of spirit, asking us to like really tune in, tap in to meditation, to past life regression work, to any kind of subconscious hypnosis programming that might help you re- adjust your thoughts so that you can attract from this beautiful magnetic monopole that only attracts it doesn't repel so attracting more of the right experiences opportunities and uh, people into your life that are deserving of your beautiful love so that is a lot to unpack for all of you <laughs> you know this it's meant to give you an inspiration. I will, I, I will always do work that feels exciting, that feels possible because there is enough places that you can go to take your frequency into the toilet. But I prefer to help you bring it up and to really honor the beauty of what is here for us right now, what is coming towards you, you know, and then three days after this beautiful Venus star point hits, like 
we're going to have an eclipse in Scorpio, you know, so there's this element of like shift and change and you're in, you're in the mix of it right now. Like, so ride the wave, this too shall pass. If anything feels like it's a little bit too much, don't worry, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. You will be fine. You will work through it collectively, like connect, connect yourself to a bigger network of people who are feeling, you know, like they want to up level. They, they also want to feel different. They don't want to feel burdened way down and all the things I'm going to pull a card before I let you go today. Um, and then I'll bid you adieu having a beautiful, a beautiful Venus star point. You know, those of you who have your candles, light your candles. Those of you who are like, I need to get myself some candles. I will put the link below for you. Follow the Witch in the Wick on Instagram. And I am so excited to just be in your vibes and in your energy. Because I know so many of you are also, you're here to learn for yourself. Because there are people who are following you, watching you paying attention to what you say. And when the world is like falling apart outside, they're coming to you to be like, what is happening? So I want you to have a place to come and feel supported as you're moving through all of these energies yourself. Okay. So what do we have? Ah, Self-love. Self-love is the first card, which is about that nurturing piece. It's like reaffirming everything we just talked about, reaffirming, reaffirming, and explore, giving yourself the opportunity to think outside of the box, to explore innovation, to, to just get outside of the box, become unboxable, move outside of the box, step outside of the box, explore all the options <laughs> and be free. Okay. we got two chicks climbing trees. One's climbing a tree. One's climbing a ladder. I mean, go be free. Be free and explore and love the living budgies out of yourself. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I am so grateful for your time, your vibes, and all of the things. Have an absolutely fantastic Venus star point in Libra. And I'll be back soon with another video, probably on the eclipse vibes. So take care, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you soon.